Hello everyone, my name is Emma and today we're going to be talking about how to treat, what causes and how to identify swim bladder disease in fish. So one important thing we should know beforehand is what is a swim bladder? And almost all fish have these, it's essentially a sack of air the fish uses to control its buoyancy. And when the swim bladder isn't functioning the way it's supposed to, we will notice things such as the fish floating up uncontrollably or being stuck to the bottom. As you can imagine, this can be quite problematic. One of the reasons so is, say you have a goldfish and you keep them outside in a pond and it gets quite cold. If the fish is floating up to the surface, its exposure to the elements can cause them to develop ulcers. It's also problematic, say a beta fish has swim bladder disease and sinks to the bottom. Beta fish are a special kind of fish that require air to breathe at the surface. So they will try to swim up and if the swim bladder disease is so bad to the point they can't get to the surface, they will suffocate or drown actually. <laughs> Moving on, um, swim bladder disease isn't actually a disease but a symptom to another condition. These conditions vary, which makes swim bladder disease quite hard to treat. The most common cause of swim bladder disease is constipation, followed by either internal bacterial parasites. Physical injury can cause swim bladder disease, or sometimes the fish just got unlucky, got some bad genetics, and it's just stuck floating or sinking. Some fish, such as fancy goldfish, are more prone to genetically getting swim bladder disease. Now moving on to treatments. So treatments can vary slightly from fish to fish, but it's more or less the same. So for goldfish, you're going to want to fast them for about three days. You can also feed them a boiled skinned pea. This is good for goldfish. It helps them relieve themselves. You can also try giving them an Epsom salt bath, and Epsom salt acts as a laxative for fish, so it helps them poop. And I'll go more into Epsom salt baths later. So next is how to treat constipation in a bait fish. So bait fish are a bit different to goldfish. Uh, bait fish are carnivores, so they cannot really eat plant matter, well they can but it's not particularly good for them. And it's a very common myth with beta fish, um, a lot of the time if you look online you'll get told to give them a, a boiled skinned pea as well, just like goldfish, but if you do this it'll actually do more harm than good. And a suitable alternative for this is Daphnia, it's a little difficult to find but you can find it in most um, pet stores. But you're still also going to want to fast them for three days at first. This allows the fish to pass what's left in its stomach without being bombarded with more food. Same thing with Epsom salt baths, they're good for beta fish too, and we'll be going on to that now. So it's good to know that Epsom salt is not the same as aquarium salt, they are completely different substances. Epsom salt, like I said before, acts as a laxative, whereas aquarium salt isn't. It can sometimes help with external infections, but that's really it. If you go and buy Epsom salt, it's very, very, very important you buy the unscented, completely plain Epsom salt. Don't be going out buying lavender Epsom salt, because you're going to put it in there and you're going to find a dead fish. And the way you want to give an Epsom salt bath is taking about one US gallon of the fish's water adding a tablespoon of Epsom salt into that water and leaving them in there for about 15 minutes, one to two times a day. And you should do this for the duration you're fasting the fish. It's okay if you go a little bit over the 15 minutes. Um, it's generally safe for about 25 minutes, half an hour. After that point, you're getting into sort of dangerous territory. Now, if you've done all of that and your fish still has swim bladder disease, it is very unlikely it's still constipation and you want to move on to the next steps and assume it's either an internal bacteria or an internal parasite. Now, this isn't as common as constipation, but it's still very, very common. I've had a number of fish 
that have had swim bladder disease and it's not been constipation. I've learned this the hard way, unfortunately. But fish keeping is a learning curve at the end of the day, and I've learned a lot. So the best medications I've found for treating internal bacteria parasites is Cechem Canaplex, which is canamycin, Cechem Metroplex, that is metronidazole, Praziquenzel, Pro, which is Praziquenzel, and an API general cure is a mixture of Praziquenzel and metronidazole. Canaplex is just going to treat internal bacteria. Uh, Metroplex will treat internal bacteria and internal parasites. Prazi Pro will treat just internal parasites, and an API general cure will treat both internal bacteria and internal parasites. Now, when I talk about internal parasites, it's important to know there's a lot of different types of parasites out there, and each medication is going to target a different type of parasite. So, metronidazole, which is in Cechem Metroplex, and API General Cure, is going to treat a different kind of parasite as Vanprazi Pro. That's why I think API General Cure would be the best option out of all of these, because it's the most broad. It's not usually recommended to mix medications, however, from my personal experience, I found it okay to mix canamycin, metronidazole, and praziquenzel. However, I definitely recommend you still doing your own research beforehand, because drug interactions are a very, very real thing. I'd especially recommend doing it if you're mixing them with any medications not on this list right here. So if things are really, really bad, you can mix and match medications. Just make sure you're not doubling up on the same medication. Like, don't mix API General Cure with Prazi Pro because they both have Prazi Quenzel in, and then you're going to be doubling the dose of that. Or don't add API General Cure with Metroplex because both have metronidazole in, and why would you add more metronidazole into a medication that already has that in it? Now all of those medications you can add into the water and they will work in the water but a more effective way to administer medication is through the food. I really 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 like metronidazole flakes, you can buy them online pre-made or you can make them yourself. I have the recipe here on the screen. It takes a lot of ingredients to make as you can see but they're really, really good. I absolutely love metronidazole flakes. I gave mine to my fish that had swim bladder disease after a round of canaplex, and the canaplex wasn't working, so it must have been internal parasites. And I noticed an improvement in about three days after giving them metronidazole fish flakes. I'd recommend giving them for about 10 days to two weeks because you want to make sure you give them for a while to kill whatever's there, not just give them long enough for the fish to stop showing symptoms and the parasites still be in there and cause problems later on. Also, if you are going to use the medication in the water column, I would recommend getting a quarantine tank because a lot of medications can cause problems with the beneficial bacteria in the tank, also with live plants. Uh, Metroplex or Metronidazole is a bit of a controversial one. Some people have said they, it hasn't killed their plants. I have had experience with it messing with some of my crinums, but that was the only plant I had problems with it killing. Epsom salt baths will also help the fish pass any dead parasites. I should also add that if you notice your fish has white or yellow stringy poop, that's almost guaranteed to be a parasite infection. So if your fish has swim bladder disease and it's pooping out white, yellow, stringy stuff, that's parasites and aim towards a more parasite-based medication like the praziquenzel or the metronidazole instead of canaplex. Now, if you are unfortunate enough to not be living in the United States and having access to some of the best fish medications out there, it's okay. I hope you live in Europe because that's the next best place to get fish medications other than Asia. So if you're in Europe, your best bet is going with Isha. I think that's how you pronounce it. 
I really like their brand. They have some of the best customer support out there. Much better than Seachem, actually. The people who work at Isha are absolute geniuses. They have helped me with a few of my questions regarding uh, microscopes and identifying parasites and stuff under the microscope. They're very, very technical over there. So if you have any questions, um, call them up, drop them an email, go to their YouTube channel. Their YouTube channel is also very, very good. Um, <laughs> on to the point note, if you're in Europe, and I think you can get this in England too, although you have to probably get it delivered. Um, Isha 2000 and Isha Hex, Hexameter, Hexameter, I believe both of those would be your best bets for treating swim bladder disease. I haven't used either of them, but I was looking through the ingredients and looking online, um, and I believe either one of those will be best. You can't use them both at the same time, but the ingredients do more or less the same thing on both of those. and. And if you can't get metronidazole or canamycin, you may as well go with that because there's nothing else much better you're going to be able to get your hands on. I should also add, don't even bother with interpets, swim bladder disease treatment. Uh, I could run on for a while without interpet. I used to live in the UK. I can't stand their products. They're absolute trash. Um, Google the ingredients on the screen yourself. It will show you how absolute trash it is. And look, it only treats bacteria. What a complete scam. What if your swim bladder disease is caused by a parasite and you treat with that? Like, it's not going to help at all and you just wasted five, ten pounds on a medication that doesn't even work. Now, if you live in Canada, thank you government for banning all the good fish medications out there. I believe it was around 2012 when they banned just about every good fish medication. Canadians were hoarding medications left, right, centre in their freezers. But to be honest, all that's probably expired now. Nowhere in Canada is going to be selling anything good. Your best bet is crossing the US border and smuggling in some metronidas all through that way. I don't even think you can get Isha products in Canada. Um, you're on your own on this one. And Australians, you're on your own too. I don't know anything about Australia and the medications you got there, so good luck. Now, ending my rant with the next topic, genetics and injuries. Like I said before, some fish are just more prone to getting swim bladder disease than others. Cough, cough, goldfish, cough, cough. You've all seen the goldfish wheelchair. This just sums up my points clearly. Sometimes swim bladder disease is permanent and no medications can cure it. Although, you can attach some tubing around their waist and try and make life just a little bit better for them. Now, if you all fish say does have swim bladder and you know it's not parasites and you know it's not constipation. There is a risky procedure you can do. I wouldn't actually recommend doing it yourself. I'd definitely get a professional to do this. Um, but there's something called periodic aspiration. It's basically sticking a needle into the fish's swim bladder and it will kind of let some air out and hopefully deflate it to the point where your fish can kind of swim a bit better. I don't know much about it, but I do know it happens. And I also do know it's um, a bit dangerous, quite a bit dangerous actually. So I would definitely do more research about it. If you know your fish has a genetic problem, you're definitely not going to get all your information about it from me because I don't know much about it. I just know it's a thing. But fish can also get swim bladder disease when they're injured. Say you accidentally suck one up one of your siphons when gravel cleaning and bad things happen and they mess up their swim bladder, that's the way it could get permanently damaged through injury. Or if you have some a fish that jumps out the tank and um, lands on a hard surface, that's another way it could damage its swim bladder permanently. The list goes on. And there's just not much you can really do about that, other than make sure it doesn't happen to begin with. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And if there's any other videos you'd like me to cover, feel free to recommend some suggestions to me, and I shall try to make a video on those to help you guys too.